Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm speaking with Michelle Fabre. She has a beautiful new single out, it is called Rock Me With A Deeper Love, and I'm super excited to talk to her all about it. Michelle, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. You made it through an earthquake to be here. How are you doing today? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing pretty well, considering. <laughs> nice. How is life? How are things? What's going on? Everything has been going really well. I'm preparing for my show, which is also on Sunday, as well as the new release. And um, we're going to be performing on Long Island. Cool. And we've just been preparing with my band. <laughs> awesome. Well, I've been listening to the song nonstop since you sent it over. I sincerely mean that. Obviously, I've reviewed your music so many times in the past, but this one, not to discount the others, uh, the others it just feels very special and it rocks hard. And even though the instrumentation is amazing, you're still very much at the forefront of it, kind of just like leading the charge. Mm -hmm. So I think the song title itself gives a really good idea of what it's about. But obviously I'm not you, I didn't write the lyrics. I wanna know what it's about. Where, where did this come from? Thank you so much. Well, the song really came about from like, um, a situation I'll say that I was in and um, it was kind of I wouldn't even say like a full-on relationship but just kind of like a feeling that I was really experiencing with this person and I guess that I felt in general before with certain people and it's really just about kind of the meaning of really wanting something a bit deeper you know in a relationship it doesn't even have to be romantic per se but I think that sometimes like you get to a point especially as you get older that you really want to be with someone who could kind of give you something a bit deeper and more meaningful um you know yeah and I fully know <laughs> I mean yeah listen like I am definitely an, an instrumentation guy when it comes to listening to the music but I feel that the more you listen to the music the more you try to connect the dots on who this person is and what they're writing about and I'm glad that like <laughs> me connecting the dots is what you said and I wasn't wildly wrong because no truly because like I mean on a personal note like I'm actually going through something very similar and so I you know I leaned on this song listening to it I was like damn like she does what she's talking about and what a coincidence at the same time so I like that you keep your music personal and it also kind of gives an opportunity for people that don't know you to get to know a certain side of you which is really nice well, that's definitely something that I was like, you know, wondering about with the lyrics. I was like, you know, that I really hope that this is something that people kind of understand because it seemed like out of all of my songs and like the songwriting process, it seemed kind of the most, I'll say, difficult to kind of put into words the specifics of what I was feeling and making it yet general so that people get it. Totally get it. Well, yeah, because that's the thing is, it is obviously personal and directed towards the situation, mm -hmm. but it's not so much like, this is what it's about. And if it's about anything else, then you're wrong. You leave things yeah. up to interpretation, which is really nice. Exactly. Um, and <laughs> so obviously, you know, the music is under your name, but you've got an amazing band that plays for you. And I, I want to talk about that, but I also just have to give like a special shout out to the last minute of this song that just <laughs> fully goes off in the best way possible on this solo that right when you think it's going to end, it just continues on and builds until the song ends. And I don't know whose choice that was. It doesn't really matter, but it was such a perfect artistic choice to kind of just let it float. I, I loved it so much. It was great. Thank you. So much so it's so funny because when we my dad and I worked together first like originally on this song like we you know came up with the lyrics and all the whole yeah. idea and concept and um he was just like you know freestyling a little bit and just kind of put that guitar down and just out of nowhere and I'm I said to him like I hope that you're putting that at, at the end or somewhere in the song and he was like you know what um that's a little bit unorganic like unorganic in a way as far as with commercial pop music you rarely hear solos especially like that long and I've been looking it up too and apparently yeah like not many people use solos and I think it's something that people want more um because like it hasn't been really featured in pop music since like the 80s 90s I feel like that's what oh, I've been looking into so 
yeah, I said to him, like, yeah, you better be adding that in there. And it took a little bit of convincing uh, but in the end. <laughs> so thank you. No. So that was your dad playing. Yeah. Your dad <laughs> rips. That's amazing. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I hope, I'm sure that he'll watch this, but at the same time, tell him directly. He's an incredible player. <laughs> thank um, you. And, and you're welcome. And going into what you said, you are so right, because pop music is all about like, you know, you, I guess pop artists make music that it's like, okay, two and a mm -hmm. half minutes to three minutes has to be radio friendly, yeah. filler, straight to the point, on to the next one. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt in my mind that you could put together like a radio edit of the song because people, you know, generally just don't want to listen to long songs, which sucks. But you mm -hmm. can have versions of the song that feature it and don't feature it. And the people that like the radio edit version are just wrong. Like they should be listening. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, exactly. And I think that so, so many people like appreciate, you know, especially like in today's music with technology, I think it's nice to also have some kind of like a realness and like, you know, live music oriented. And yeah, I think that more people appreciate that nowadays. So I'm yeah. glad that you like that. Totally. <laughs> Another thing that I really liked about the song is that obviously, you know, it's rooted in pop, but at the same time, I think it pulls a lot from like decades past of sound, which yeah. is kind of like a general theme in your music. It's not always super, super modern. You definitely pull from the past, which I like. Yeah. So like, what's like the thought process going behind that? Like, how, how do you start the song? Do you always have that in mind of sort of blurring, you know, decades? You know, it's so funny because I think when I first started, um, it just kind of happened so naturally. Um, my dad always says it's his fault, probably, <laughs> because he was around in like, you know, the 70s, 80s. And I yeah. think the, the, like those are such great eras of music that and I hear it coming back and like, you know, a lot of artists and bands of today I come. It's so it's nice to like use, you know, and like take from that. And um, I love the 80s, you yeah. know, the sets that were kind of, everyone always says that they hear that in my music. So at this point, I'm like, may as well just, <laughs> right. but yeah, there's so many, you know, musicians that I do take from, like inspiration from, like, I love Santana. Sure. Um, I love Gladys Knight. So um, Janis Joplin, uh, I love Michael Jackson and Dan Hartman is one that I recently okay. kind of like to so really all over the place, but I do try to kind of like make pop music that is not just solely pop. Like it has a strong crossover of like rock, right. R&B. And I think that you could reach more audiences that way too. 100%. I was just going to say that because like it doesn't always have to be like a third, a third, a third mix of like, well, it has to have pop and it has to have soul. Like Exactly. You know, I've said it. I've said it a hundred times, but I'll say it more. Like it's pop music, but it has so many influences throughout it. Mm -hmm. And I also say this in you know interviewing other artists. It's like music nowadays with the future of where production is, and just like there isn't just rock music anymore. There isn't just pop music anymore. You you as an independent artist, you're trying to cast as wide of a net as possible mm -hmm. to capture as many listeners. Like that's the real of it. But at the same exactly. time, yeah, yeah, you want to make the music that you want to make. And it just so happens the music is awesome, but it's also pulling together so much in it. I think that that's what's so great about today's music is that it's not just solely one genre. And that's why you see like different artists collaborating, which I think is so awesome, you know, because then it also reaches like their fans and their audience. And I think that that's great, you know, just oh, I fully agree. It, it makes it like a little bit more flexible and experimental too. Right. So then how does it work in terms of actually making the song? Do you always start with lyrics? Does it start with like a random jam that you then put lyrics in afterwards? Like what's what's the deal on that end? Yeah, well, for this song specifically, um, it kind of surprised, it really came with, um, I guess like my dad kind of like coming up with something on the guitar actually. And then I just kind of said, yeah, you know, I've been feeling this way lately about this specific situation. I'm like, yeah. you know, what do you want? Like, I, I just was like, kind of thinking like, I want something deep deeper. I want something more meaningful yeah. out of life. And then the lyrics came and then um, the beat and kind of like the direction of like, what 
what vibe, what uh, direction do we want this to go in? And of course, now that like I've been working with the band, I kind of wanted them to play on it. So I'm like, you know, kind of give it that pop rock direction and feel right. to it. So then you also mentioned that you have an upcoming show, which is happening this Sunday. What yeah. is what does the show look like? Like, is it all originals? Are there covers in there? Like, is, is it the full band that's playing? Yeah, it is. And um, we do have some covers actually, which is kind of nice. It, it's a bit, of, it's a lot of my originals and also sure. some covers. And um, what's great is that the bass and keyboard player, they also sing. So they're going to be doing a few songs. Um, my bass player is performing one of her originals and um, just a mixture of everything. And I think it's so awesome in a way because doing my originals live has brought a totally different feel to it. So I'm actually in the process of kind of redoing a few of those. Okay. And, uh, seeing, you know, where that goes. <laughs> nice. Is there a song of yours that you most look forward to playing live? I love, I think we all like one of mine, uh, my originals, it's called Stay Tuned. And okay. uh, we're, we did that, we recorded that one in the studio with the band and um, I should say re-recorded that. Sure. And um, it just, it kind of, it's funny. It, it has like a bit of a, I'll say like a sexy, funky, you know, overtone, yeah. which is nice. And um, it's actually the first um, song that we do at the show. I put that one first because I'm like, it's a good opener. <laughs> oh, you know what? Okay. Thank you for saying that. You cannot come out onto a stage where people might not know who you are. Yeah. Open with something that's not necessarily boring, but isn't like gripping from attention. Exactly. Like, yeah. I I love what I do. I love talking to people. I love music. But like, can you imagine how great it would be to take your favorite artist and just create the perfect set list for them? Because it's so oh. important. It really is. And I see that now, you know, even like playing with a band, like it's so important to know, like, you know, the direction of the set list and also to not like, um, as you know, the singer who's we do about, it's um, two 45 minute sets. So it's about like 11, 12 wow. songs. And um, it's a lot like on a singer yeah. who's, and <laughs> I think it's about like being so smart and like mindful with, you know, like the songs, even like going back to back and just to keep your energy up people don't realize like as a performer it's crazy a lot. <laughs> yeah there's only so many you know coffees you can drink before a show <laughs> to like like keep yes. up the energy I totally understand I'm a big coffee drinker and I I love strong coffee so like oh, seven scoops is my go-to <laughs> and as a you know performer yeah <laughs> God, I love it. definitely um, recommend <laughs> so we we're recording this in the beginning of April. I can't believe it's April. This year is flying right by. And you strike me as the type of person that is always planning for the future, whether it be, I don't know, maybe in terms of like demos or just working towards the next next single or video or whatever it is. So you can say what you want. You don't have to say too much. What does this year look like for you? Well, I have a lot of songs that are just kind of like ready to be released. So yeah. I have a few singles and I have actually a few covers that I kind of redid. And um, it's it's very diversified. Like one is by um, Enrique Iglesias and then another one by Shawn Mendes and cool. then uh, a few others. So it's just really all over the place. And um, then I have, like I was saying, some... Of my originals that I'm redoing and I just want to be like I want to structure it well and like organize it but like yeah so that's kind of in the world either an, maybe an EP and then maybe another album of like originals yeah that <laughs> I mean hey take your time but it sounds like you kind of know what you want if you have the songs then hey put them together and put them out yeah I think that's what it's about it's like just keep like keep them going keep the momentum going you know sometimes I get so stuck like in the creative process of like you know fine-tuning things and really wanting it to be perfect which I think every artist is like that you know everyone is very hard on themselves and you know but at some point it's like it has to come out too so right. <laughs> right. you do what you want that's another best part of being an independent musician you don't mm -hmm. have someone pulling the strings at the top. You kind of do what you want to do. And when you're inspired, yeah. you put it out. I get it. Um, I, I have a couple more questions for you, but 
I also want to know, like, does the music that you listen to on a daily basis have any influence on the music that you make? Or do you actively try to, like, you know, split the two up so that you're not making the same music that you listen to? That's a good question, actually. I think, you know, I don't, I do listen to like a lot of today's top hits and all that to kind of get a feel of like, you know, the direction of everything and where I'm trying to go, because in a way that is my um, genre market, I guess you could say. Um, But at the same time, like there are certain things that I don't want to per se copy from like the music that I listen to. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm really... Because then I do, though, take, like I was saying, of course, as you hear, like a lot of the influence from the older music that I listen to and, and trying to like kind of like make it a comeback for some of that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think a little bit. It's sometimes hard not to in a way. <laughs> well, sometimes it like slips into your subconscious and you're like making a song and it's like, wait, wasn't I listening to this same song a couple of days ago? Yes. Oh I know it can be tough, but at the same time, there's only <laughs> so many chord arrangements out there without, you know, doing your own. Yeah, it's so know. many artists say that too, like, you know, famous yeah. and, and also like independent artists too. It's like, it's so hard to, yeah. to sometimes like, to not, you know, accidentally take from right. <laughs> music. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you see all the lawsuits and stuff like that. And it's like, mathematically, there's only so many things that we could put together it's like we've been making music for hundreds of years but listen I don't think you have to worry about that like your music is original in its own right so thank you away from the lawsuits anyway I have one one more question to ask you and (laughs) the question is it's basically for the person that is going to discover you from this interview what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them before they listen to your music for the first time I would say try to, well, I would say that I hope that it kind of reaches them in a way to kind of um, be a bit more introspective to my lyrics and I, I guess what I'm trying to come from, if that makes sense. Like I think some, I mean, in general, like lyrics have such a deeper meaning and they're not just always like on the surface as they appear. Yeah. But I think specifically, like even with mine, like I do try to have somewhat uplifting lyrics and things that hopefully like make people think and they're not just as they always sound on the surface like there's a deeper meaning and yeah I just hope that it kind of uplifts them (laughs) I think it will I truly think it will um Michelle I want to thank you so much for taking the time before we wrap up please let me plug your music for you so everyone out there I'm speaking with Michelle Fabre the song By the time this comes out, will be out. It is called Rock Me With a Deeper Love. There's the song, there's the video, there's a show, there will be future shows. And of course, we'll have the links in our articles that you can listen and share and follow along and do all that fun stuff. I'm so I'm I'm so happy we got to talk, but I'm also so happy that like more music is on the way. I'm so glad that we got to actually meet each other in person for like a few times. We've been, you know kind of like yeah. shouting for a few years now email just doesn't cut it exactly it never it really, does <laughs> it really does. awesome all right michelle thank you so much again i hope you have an amazing rest of your day and i hope to speak soon i'm i'm really looking forward to your more music i love just like what you're putting out absolutely thank you so much for having me you're very welcome all right take care bye-bye bye